Hi guys, what's up? It's Anna Louise. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video, I'm going to be announcing a secret that is very personal to me and my journey in life. It's something that I'm very happy and excited about. I'm gonna announce it to you guys because I share stuff with you. And I also hope that my little announcement and secret, maybe it'll help some of you guys as well. Like maybe this can be helpful um, in making a decision for your life. So if you're interested in hearing about what I have to announce, Announce, then make sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave and hit that bell notification so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video and with that being said let's hop right on into today's video okay guys I have been forgetting and forgetting to make this video and I just remembered it and I'm like you know what I think now is the time. So here's the tea. This is an announcement. It's something very special to me. I mean, you guys honestly may not even care. I mean, I don't know, but I am back in school. Yeah, I'm back in college and um, yeah, it's really, really important and wonderful and exciting and a happy time for me in my life and for my life's accomplishments. Essentially, I do have my associate's degree already. I also am a registered dental assistant. I have my RDA. I was valedictorian of my class um, and I am really good at that. But, or I, I mean, I've never like actually worked the job. I mean, I did for like a day. Anywho, um, I'll kind of explain my history and a little bit about what I'm doing now because I have something to tell you guys or should I say show you guys here towards the end so basically um, I started YouTube straight out whoa something's in my eye I started YouTube straight out of high school I started college to get my associate's degree and when I was in college, that is when my YouTube started to take off and I started to grow my following. So um, also I did, you know, I was very new to my chronic illnesses that I had as well, like having those was a big thing. I hope you guys can see me well. Okay, having my chronic illnesses, you know, I was learning to navigate life with that. My plans before I ever had a YouTube was just to, you know, get my associate's degree, go on to get my bachelor's degree and be a teacher. Um, it was something I always enjoyed playing when I was a little girl, I loved to play teacher. And so I was like, okay, that's what I wanna do. But the college, the only college option that I had, sorry, was to do elementary school children and I am not that good with children. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I want children of my own and I love my nephew and my nieces with my heart, but other people's children, I'm honestly not that great with. And anyway, as it goes, I started to gain my following and I obviously started to make money on YouTube. And I really truly just realized that being a teacher was not what I wanted to be and I was making money on YouTube and you know making money through selling my betta fish and I was like okay like there's no need for this but it was still always a goal and aspiration of mine to have a bachelor's degree and that's because no one in my family up until this point would have had a college degree uh, they just never did and it was just a personal goal for myself I believe that you can have a job and not have a degree wholeheartedly, but I do believe that education is a privilege and a wonderful thing to have. So I wanted to, but you know what? I was so torn because I was like, I don't know what I possibly would even do. And I started college and to go and do it for like a HR business thing, but I'm like, you know what? I hated it. Cause I was like, you know, I'm never gonna use this. Never gonna use HR, human resource if you didn't know. I'm never gonna use this. I'm a YouTuber. I I just want a bachelor's degree. This is something I'm not gonna use. And I was just, I just hated the experience. I didn't like the college as well, the way they did things. It was just not my cup of tea. So I dropped out. I actually have a video up on my YouTube channel talking about me dropping out of that college. And I don't regret that decision at all. In fact, I'm so grateful I dropped out of that freaking college. And I, I know this may seem crazy, but yeah, if you're unhappy with what you're doing at college, I encourage you to drop out too. And I'll 
keep going with my story. I got my RDA just because I was like, okay, this is something that I used to want to do. My family's in the healthcare field. I have a dad who did dental stuff his whole life. Um, and so I got my RDA and it was a great experience. Like I said, I was valedictorian, but obviously I knew I wasn't gonna use that either. It was just something that I felt I had to do because society tells you that you gotta freaking do something and society is not used to unconventional jobs especially when you come from a small town so I was really worried just about like what people were gonna think even though like I was making you know money on YouTube which is something that not everyone can do in fact most people can't it's very hard to do um, and then I started another university for just business because that at that point I had started Rosen Courts, which is my business that I am so proud of. I love with my whole heart. So I started my business Rosen Courts and I was like, okay, I'm sure that this business degree could probably help me in some way with my business and just give me good pointers. Um, and I enrolled in this online university that my cousin went through and I hated it. <laughs> I love doing online schooling, but this school was weird. They did things unlike any school I'd ever seen before, and the work, I realized that it had nothing to do with anything I would ever use. It was for corporate crap. So I hated it, and I lost my love for schoolwork. Like, I actually have always been someone who loves schoolwork. I enjoyed college when I went the first time. I enjoyed RDA, registered or dental school. Um, I mean, I was valedictorian. I enjoyed it. So I was just upset. I'm like, I'm apparently never going to get a bachelor's degree. Um, and I dropped out and it was just like, you know, woof. Um, at that point, I had, that point I had my successful business, which is Rosen Quartz. It is my business that I work on every day. It's my job. And obviously YouTube still. So once again, this was not something I needed because I do do YouTube and I do have my own business. I am a businesswoman through and through and I am proud of myself and love every moment of it. But it's just that I wanted to have a bachelor's degree because I wanted to be the first in my family to do so. And now at this point, my sister has one and my cousin. But other than that, still, I mean, I've been working on it. I'll be the first, one of the first. Um, and it's just a personal life goal and accomplishment for myself. But here's the tea. I never thought to look into unconventional things because before I got my job doing YouTube, I only went for to I only thought it was okay to go to school for uncon or for conventional things such as being a teacher or a nurse or whatever, right? Something that's easy to get a job for. But at that point, you know, I didn't need that anymore because I am a YouTuber and I own my own business. So I was like, wait, it's actually okay to do the unconventional. And so my, me and my mom were just like looking around and she found this really great program and it's through Southern New Hampshire University. Um, I love it there. Uh, she found this great program and it's something that I have wanted to do and been interested in my whole life. And it's something that I will actually use. And that is an English and creative writing degree. So I am going to school to get my bachelor's degree for English and creative writing. Um, I've been an English girl always and I love writing. It's something that I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be an author and um, I plan on writing my own book. In fact, I am working on my very first novel right now uh, and that I'm so excited for. I am in the process of writing it uh, while doing my classes and I've known about this since May and I started school in July or sorry I've known about this since May. I started school in June and I have loved every daggum second of it. So it is the unconventional and but it will help me because you know I plan on adding to my repertoire of things from youtuber to businesswoman to author and it's just amazing I have went through a couple of classes and when I tell you I was excited or I am excited to do my schoolwork every week I'm excited I actually look forward to it I usually complete my schoolwork and my whole week's work in two days because I just go through it because I'm just so committed. It's something that I love with my whole heart. I actually look forward to it. I graduate next October, so I will have the bachelor's degree. It's gonna be something that I can use even though I do YouTube and my business is my main job. 
It's going to help me write the novel I've always wanted to write. I've gotten great grades so far. I have been so in love with my classes. And in fact, my first um, creative writing class that we did, I was so inspired. And I actually, for my final, which I got 100 on, by the way, um, my final was to write a short story. I had a five-page limit. It was a short story. And I was so inspired by it, I'm actually going to be making my very first novel, or I am starting to write my very first novel, based on my short story that I wrote. Um, so, what I thought I would do today is read you guys my short story if you wanted to hear it. I would love to. I'm very proud of it. I love it. My mom was so proud of me. She said it made her want to cry, which I don't normally get that reaction out of her. Like, she's not that type of person. But I'm so proud of my story, and it's my novel is going to actually be based on this story. Like I said, I only had a five-page limit, but I figured I'd read it for you. So, if you want to hear my story, then keep listening. We'll have a little story time where I read to you guys. So, the only thing I'm going to tell you about this story is it's about a girl named Jen. That's my main character or the protagonist's name. And the other character that you'll be seeing is Steven. And that is all I'm going to say. And I am just also going to say that I am very much into crime and mysteries and stuff like that. That's all I'm going to say. So if you want to hear my story, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. This is all too much for me. I wipe the tears from my eyes, leaving my hand feeling wet and icky. I hate the feeling of being wet. My head is pounding as if someone has beaten it with a baseball bat and my button up is sticking to me from all the sweat. I air out my shirt from being stuck on my body and when it touches my skin again, it becomes cold to the touch. I take a deep breath and walk into the room. Steven, my only friend at my job and in this town, walks with a confident stride over to my desk and pulls up a chair beside me. I try to act like I have it all together. Hey pal, why so blue? Steven asks. I rest my chin in my hand, sighing in defeat. You can tell. I ask with a somber face. Well yeah, your eyes are bloodshot red and you have snot coming from your nose. He adds with a laugh. I pull my long brown hair into a ponytail and start to tell him the story. I am just so tired of Lauren giving me more than I can handle. I mean, I only started a few months ago. It's like I can't catch a break. I say as fresh tears sting my eyes and I try my hardest to fight back the, the burning lump in my throat. Sorry guys, the sun. Listen, Tex, you're fine. You're going to kill it. It's your first time in a big city and at a new job. Plus, you're helping out a lot of kids by finding them the perfect home. You were made for this. I'm almost positive she will lighten up in a few weeks. Just give it time, he says as he pats my back. Stephen and I are strictly just friends, and I like it that way. He has tall... He... Sorry. Hmm. He is tall, has very luscious, thick brown hair that any girl would die for, and has the brightest blue eyes that I have ever seen. Steven looks suave and intimidating, but in reality, he has the demeanor of someone so sweet and so kind. In the short time I have been working in foster care, he has treated me almost like a sister. Besides, I'm not in the place for a relationship, and even if I was, I am simply not his type. Suddenly, I feel a jab in my shoulder that catches me by such a surprise that I jump and choke on my own spit. I start having a coughing fit so loud that the whole office looks at me with eyes of judgment. Right in front of me on my desk is a paper airplane. I look down at the poorly done white paper plane in front of me and immediately know that it's from Steven. In what looks like chicken scratch, he wrote, Drinks after work, 7 p.m. Monestos. Be there or be square. I smile the biggest smile in what feels like forever and give him a big thumbs up. For a very poised, sophisticated looking man, he sure did have lousy handwriting. I muster through the day and try to think about, what a think about actually getting out and doing something social for once. After work, I rush back to my quaint little apartment as fast as humanly possible. I really want to try to fix myself up a little and look nice. It'll be my first time getting a taste of this new city. My stomach flips upside down as I open my tiny closet. I settle on a cream halter top and a pair of skinny jeans. I try my best to settle my nerves by turning on the evening news as I get dressed. All I hear are the words, murder of a well-known family. I immediately reach to press the off button on my remote. Hearing the word murder does not help the bile I feel in my throat just waiting for the chance to come out. With a deep breath, I slide on my only pair of heels. What? 
Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm flipping through pages on my phone. They're my only pair of heels that I own and hope that I look decent for the occasion. I step out of my apartment to catch a taxi. The weather is so warm and lovely that it feels like being wrapped up in a cozy, blank, cozy blanket. My taxi arrives and I sit in silence on the way to the bar. With my heart pounding and one leg constantly bumping up and down, bobbing up and down, I sit back, try to relax, and think about how I will have a good time with a good friend. I feel a sense of calm when I hop out and see Steven. As we walk in, I can smell the aroma of food off the grill. It smells amazing. Steven grabs my hand and leads me to a seat at the bar. We order a drink. How are you? Steven yells so that I can hear him over the sound of Freddie Mercury belting out the lyrics to Another One Bites the Dust. Fine, I yell back at what feels like at the top of my lungs. I feel a lot better. I stop mid-sentence and look over to see Steven peering off into the distance at some girls laughing at a table nearby. His eyes look oddly distant. Steven, I yell with worry in my voice. Yes, he asks, staring at the girls. I playfully kick his leg beside me with a bit of a laugh, which gets his attention. He swivels around on his maroon bar stool to face me. Sorry, Tex, so uh, what were we talking about? He asks in a more chipper voice, but something still seems off about it. You can just tell in his eyes that he feels pain or maybe even emptiness. You just asked me how I was and I, I try to talk again, but he cuts me off. Look, Jen, you're my friend, right? And friends listen to friends when they're in trouble. He says in a serious voice using my first name, which he never does. It catches me off guard. I lost my planes. Okay. Yes, of course. What's wrong? You're scaring me. I utter, suddenly losing my appetite. Let's go someplace more quiet, like out back by the dumpster so no one can hear. He quietly says while grabbing my arm to lead me outside. I suddenly feel dizzy as I try to imagine what he's going to tell me. Did he do something wrong at work? We get outside and I get a chill throughout my body. It suddenly feels cooler out. I go to take in a deep breath to prepare myself for whatever it is that Stephen is about to tell me and I get a strong whiff of garbage and are mixed with the smell of earthworms from the rain. He faces me, suddenly looking a little more intimidating. I try to tell myself that what he is going to say to me is harmless. I mean, he probably just lied on his time card at work and got caught. Jen, I murdered them. I murdered that family. You know, the ones on the news that they have been talking about constantly, I did it, it was, it was me. He says with fear in his voice as he walks back and forth with a death grip so hard on his hair that I'm surprised he does not rip it out. No, is all that I can mutter as I shake my head. It feels like time is standing still. At this moment, I begin to wish that I have never came to the city. I turn around and throw up. Everything that I have eaten today comes out and onto the wet pavement. I breathe in the smell of garbage again, which makes me throw up more. But that isn't stopping him from speaking as I spew my guts out in front of me. You know the oldest daughter? Well, she keeps turning me down, or she kept turning me down, and I never get turned down. Eventually, it just got to me and I snapped. I just snapped, I tell you. I had to have her and when she said no, I couldn't take it anymore. So I snuck in one night and killed her and her family. I shot them, he reveals. I turn around and stand up, my stomach in knots. Why are you telling me this, Stephen? What do you expect me to do? I start to cry, I'm so furious. Why would he do this to me? We're kindred spirits, Tex. You've already become like a sister to me. This is just, there's just something different about you, he says with puppy dog eyes. But for the love of God, Stephen, why now? I yell a little too loudly. It's been a whole month for crying out loud. Tex, believe me, I have wanted to tell you. I have wanted to tell you so bad that I can hardly stand it. Night after night, I have had vivid nightmares of what I did. I knew from the moment I met you that you are a good one, Tex. And I knew that I needed someone good in my life. Do you want to know how I know that you are good? Stephen feverishly says while grabbing both of my hands and shaking them with the passion of a madman. How? I almost whisper. Because I am bad, Tex. He says as he stares straight into my eyes. And that's all you need to know. I hate him and feel sorry for him at the same time. I wish I didn't have compassion for him, but I do. I don't understand why he would confide in me like this. I should be scared of him, but somehow I know he won't hurt me. I compose myself and try to reason with him. Stephen, I will go with you to the police, but you know you have to turn yourself in, right? You know it's the right thing to do. 
I know, he says, defeated. My head is spinning in so many different directions. My legs tremble as I reach out and grab his clammy hand. I hate him for this. In fact, I loathe him, but he is human too, right? My emotions are so conflicting. In these past five minutes, my life has forever changed. I'm not the same and never will be. We walk off to the police station in complete silence. Neither one of us say a word to each other. Instead, we just listen to the, to the sound of each other's footsteps as we tread in the nasty puddles of rainwater on the black asphalt. Right before we arrive, Stephen grabs my hand to stop me. He says in a serious tone, Look, I kind of sort of didn't tell you all of it. The end. <laughs> okay, that was all my short story. If you stuck around for that, thank you. What did you think about it? Let me know down below. I'd love to know your opinions. Please be nice. Um, that or my novel that I'm writing is based off of this short story. I'm very proud of it and I'm proud of I, my schooling. I love it. I'm so excited to be doing it. I hope this can be a kind of like help for some of you guys. Maybe you are feeling lost with educational journey and what you're wanting to do. Maybe my story could help some of you guys, um, inspire some of you guys, whatever, whatever. And yeah, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I know this video is a long one. Thank you for sticking around. If you did, I want to thank my patrons as always, Jeremy, Maddie Davis, Janae, Casey, Mel, Vicky, Vanessa. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being a patron. Other than that, please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel before you leave. You can do that by hitting my face right up there and you can watch another video by clicking right over there. It would mean the world to me if you would do so. And I hope you have a great day or night or whenever you may be watching this and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!